Stone Whisperer. Today we're back with a reading from Vibrant Penguins, Pete Graves, a new scientist. Interesting. Last word. Column. Collection. So, I'll do this slightly differently. I'll actually try and do this ear to ear panning. So if you actually have headphones to listen to, you might notice it slightly different. You might notice some difference when you're using your speakers as well, but obviously always better with headphones. Is there any connection between being cold and catching a cold? If not, why is there so much folklore about catching a cold if you sleep uncovered or in a draught? No, there is no connection. The erroneous association developed for several reasons. The viruses that cause colds spread faster in the winter because people spend more time inside when they are closer together. People close the windows in winter so air contaminated by virus particles is not diluted by fresh air from the outdoors. This makes it easier for a virus to spread. The cold, dry air of winter makes the mucous membranes in the nose swell. This produces the runny nose we often incorrectly associate with an infection caused by a cold virus. The experience of catching a chill and getting cold is actually the reverse of a correct order of things. The chill is often the first sign of fever and that is the result, not the cause of the infection by the cold virus. Expert advice says you should use freshly drawn water every time you make a pot of tea or coffee. Why is this? What is wrong with water that has been boiled twice? Can anyone tell the difference? The reason that freshly boiled water is more effective for making tea than water boiled twice is that the fresh water has a higher oxygen content. This should result in a tastier cuppa because more tea will be extracted from the tea leaves. This can be easily demonstrated by placing a measured amount of tea leaves in two glass tumblers, then adding freshly boiled water to one and repeatedly, repeatedly boiled water to the other. Examination of both tumblers after three minutes will reveal a much stronger brew from a freshly boiled water. Now there you go. Why does a biscuit that is left in the open overnight become soft by the morning, but a baguette left out for the same length of time becomes so hard that no that one could knock someone out with it? Biscuits contain much more sugar and salt than baguettes. The finely divided sugar and salt are hydroscopic and soak up moisture from the atmosphere. The osmotic pressure in a sweet biscuit is quite high. The dense texture of a biscuit helps maintain the moisture by capillary effects. The biscuit, the baguette on the other hand, contains little salt or sugar and has a very open structure. The flour doesn't care if there's moisture around it or not, so because of the different makeup, one attracts the water, the other 
Das haben wir jetzt. Wege. Why doesn't superglue stick to the inside of its tube? Superglue will not stick to the inside of its tube because the tube contains oxygen in form of air but excludes water. Oxygen inhibits whereas water catalyzes. Why is it that whatever they contain, dustbins always smell the same? The source of the smell is most probably caused by bacteria and fungi feeding on the organic matter in the rubbish. It will be most noticeable if the bin is in a warm and damp place. The smell will not always be exactly the same, but it will be more characteristic of the different organisms than of the type of food they consume. The smell you get from penicillin mould growing on an orange is just the same as that from penicillin mould grown in a laboratory culture. It is pungent, characteristic and very common. Analysis of household rubbish have detected very pathogenic bacteria including Pasteurella testis, the bacterium responsible for causing the bubonic plague. So don't sniff too hard. Why are the rows on a calculator or number keypad arranged with the lowest numbers at the bottom when we normally read from the top downwards? And why are telephone keypads arranged the other way with the lowest numbers at the top? Mechanical adding machines based on rotating wheels always have the zero button adjacent to the one button. By convention, most old adding machines had the numbers increasing in value from the bottom and this may be a hangover from when the machines had levers on the wheels rather than buttons. When the numbers were put onto a pad arranged as a 3 by 3 grid with one left over, the order of the numbers as far as possible was kept the same. On a rotary telephone dial, the zero becomes adjacent to the nine because a zero in the telephone number is signalled by ten pulses on the line. When telephones acquired push buttons in a grid, the ordering of the buttons was carried over from the old telephone dial. Why doesn't cling film cling to metal bowl as well as it does to an equally smooth glass or ceramic one? Cling film, known as cling wrap in the US, works because it acquires an electric charge as it is peeled from the roll. It can then stick to an insulating body by the same mechanism that an uncharged piece of paper sticks to the charged glass of your computer or television. Okay. The mechanism relies upon the cling film and the object to which it is sticking being at a substantially different electrical potential. This works when the object is an insulator. When the object is metal, the charge on a film is dissipated throughout the object, so negating the effect. Old cling film taken off a roll doesn't work either. After a while, the charge breaks away and the clinginess 
It's lost. Yeah, I did not know that. And finally, what time is it? At the North Pole. There are two answers to this question. The first is that the time for a person is the time determined by his or her circadian rhythm. Initially, the psychological time will be close to the time for the longitude your individual lived before visiting the pole. Over a period of weeks at the pole, this time will drift as the individual settles into a rhythm with a period that is usually about 25 hours long. Of course, there is also a local time, independent of people, unless you are a philosopher residing somewhere other than the pole. So the second answer is that the time is either daytime, for the first six months of summer, or nighttime, for the six months of winter. I have not been at the pole near equinoxes, but I would imagine that there are also several continuous weeks of twilight when the sun is just below the horizon. Well, there you go, everybody. I hope we've learned something new and something interesting today. Thanks very much for listening. Take care and have a great day now. Bye-bye.